Did you know that an estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year? Yeah, not great for our already struggling environment. That's why I'm so excited to talk about our partner today, Blue Land. Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastic by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and the planet with the same powerful clean you're used to. And the concept is pretty simple. You just fill your reusable bottles with water, drop in the tablets, and wait for them to dissolve. I literally just tried out the laundry tablet and instead of having to bring my huge container like I normally do down the hall, I just brought the one tablet and my clothes came out so clean, just as clean as normal. I'm fully on board. It just makes my life easier and I'm helping the environment. And the best part, Blue Land has a special offer for listeners. Right now, get 15% off your first order by going to blueland.com slash dateable. You won't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash dateable for 15% off. That's blueland.com slash datable to get 15% off. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Datable Podcast. Hey friends, welcome back to Brunch Talk, where we dissect your burning dating questions. We know you all have so many questions to ask. And every week we are here for you. We are by your side while you're eating your brunch, while your mouths are full. (laughs) We will give you what we think about your situation. They truly are endless. And the one that we got today, it takes me back because I think we've all been here before and had this burning question top of mind. And what could that burning question be? It is, should I give someone a second chance? And more context is a year ago, I went on a couple of great dates with this guy. We had a really strong connection and even kissed at the end of the date. When it came to scheduling the third date, It fizzled out due to both of us getting sick, Mm. him traveling, and then rescheduling conflicts. Recently, we reconnected, though, and he apologized for dropping the ball and his lack of communication. And we had another great date. But (laughs) then we were supposed to see each other again. He canceled again due to illness and travel. Mm. I really like him, but I'm starting to question if he's just an unreliable person. Should I give him another chance? Or is he just really sick? I don't know. That could be a bigger (laughs) issue if he keeps getting ill. End of the day, it's like, yes, you could have a great time with someone when they're physically with you on a date. But if you don't feel safe or you don't feel the consistency or even the respect when you're not with them, then you're not really going to feel that in a relationship either. So we always say, Your time apart from someone is much more telling than your time with someone. Absolutely. And this, I feel like we've all been here before. It's like, you really want to make it work because, you know, you had such great chemistry and such a good time together. But at the end of the day, like, if you can't trust that this person's going to follow through with their actions, then what do you have? I really believe consistency is the bare minimum. Yes. Like, if that's not there, then how do you build a relationship if that's what you want to do? If you want someone that can be your go-to person, I think it just comes down to this person getting real with what they want and not being afraid to tell them. Like, I know that they did apologize. They came back. I remember, like, I had an instance when I was dating and, again, got really swept up in great chemistry. We actually never met. This was virtual over COVID. But I remember him just being like, I can't wait to meet you. Like, when you come back, like, this whole thing. And then, of course, when I got back, nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. And I did eventually send a text just being like, hey, like, I am looking for someone, you know, that can make the time to meet up with me. And if that's not you, that's totally fine. But just so you know, like, I'm going to make room for that person. Like, I'm not going to just be waiting around idle Mm -hmm. for you to get free. And of course, like he responded the way I thought he would of, yeah, this isn't the right time, like best of luck. No hard feelings, though. But ultimately, why I think that is such a great thing to do is that it puts you back into the driver's seat. You're really being clear of this is what I want. And it's not making demands on someone. Like for me, it freed me up to find someone that actually could be reliable and show up. And, you know, for her, if she does put that out there, he can at least just be like, 
oh shit, yeah, I do need to like either make this happen or move out of the way. I feel like a lot of times we do things or say things because we want to show the other person that we have standards and that we're not a pushover and we're not waiting for them. But the flip of what you were saying, Julie, is turn it back on you. Mm -hmm. Is this in line with what you want? Do you want to keep seeing this person? Do you feel like you're getting the consistency and the reliability that you want? And that question is a lot more important than asking, well, how do I let this person know that I won't stand for their bullshit? Right. <laughs> you know, put it back on you. And when you can express it in that way, like I was looking forward to getting to know you. I was looking forward to our third, fourth date, but not hearing from you makes me feel like maybe we're not aligned in what we're looking for. Yeah. You know, that is a better way of getting into this. So it's not pointing fingers. It's more like we're just not aligned. Right. And I get it. You know, stuff happens. Like, Sure. We've all been sick. I don't want to say, you know, every time someone cancels a date, you should never trust them again. And they're totally flaky and unreliable. But at this end of the day, when you keep seeing a pattern, and at this point, this person has a few data points. So I'd say like, you don't need to throw this card out on the first instance. Yeah. But after like the second time, in this case, the third time, you know, it's starting to be a pattern that feels like it's something, unless you put a stake down, it's going to keep happening. It's going to be the third chance, the fourth chance, the fifth chance. It's going to be a never-ending cycle. People are flaky. Seriously. They are. People are flaky. Even if they really want to see you, they want to spend time with you. People are flaky. It could be long day at work, just don't feel like it. My dog vomited. I mean, whatever it is, people are easy to come up with excuses for not hanging out. And it really doesn't have to do with you most of the time. It's just like their kind of state of being. And I remember there was a time that I set up a first date with someone and I just completely lost track of time. And I told him I lost track of time. I'm not going to make the date. I'm so sorry. And he came back and said, that's fine. But if you truly want to see where things go or you want to go on this first date, the ball's in your court. Like, and I really appreciated that he was like, that's fine. Things come up, but now you got to take control of the situation and the onus is on you. Yeah. I think we think it's being too much to say that, but that commands respect, right? Yes. You probably with this person, you're like, oh, I'm either going to make time make it a priority, yes, or I'm going to let him be on his way. Like if I can't do that. And both of those are a win, even though it feels like it. The worst is when you're in that limbo. And this person, I didn't read like the full thing that they sent. They did say, I haven't said anything because I'm not trying to rock Mm -hmm. the boat and we're still texting while he's away. So I just feel like if you go down that path, you're always going to be at the mercy of like, is this person going to follow through? Are they going to do what they say they want to do? And is that the relationship you want. Ultimately, that's what you have to ask yourself. We s- tolerate the gray area so much, the mm-hmm. wishy-washiness, the I don't know, mm-hmm. and things in limbo, and let's see where things go. If you cannot live in the gray, which I know many of you can't, I certainly can't, you have to know that about yourself and you have to be able to communicate that and not pretend like it's fine. I'm going to play chill. I'm going to be cool. It's fine if I don't know definitively. The only way to get answers is for you to ask for the answers. So I want to go into that a little more. But before we do, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. Confession. I have a secret about how I've been able to update my wardrobe with only high quality but affordable pieces these last few years. And now I have to let the secret out because (laughs) they're sponsoring this episode. It's called Quince. Yeah, if you know, you know. Quince has premium European linen dresses, gorgeous washable silk tops, luxurious cashmere, and the best part, they're priced at 50 to 80% less than similar brands because they partner directly with top factories. 
So no more middleman. And that's why it costs less to you. I know Julie got herself some nice cashmere pieces and at only $50 a sweater. Come on. And I recently ventured into home goods. I got myself some premium cotton percale sheets, ultra cooling and just feels like a five star hotel every night. And it's so perfect for the upcoming hot months. So get warm weather ready with Quince. Go to quince.com slash datable for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash datable to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. I am all about self-care these days. And guess what? Body care is also self-care. Taking care of your body is a moment to practice mindfulness, self-love, and compassion. All things that I am fully behind right now. That's why I'm so glad to share a promo from one of our new sponsors, Osea. I'm obsessed with their Mega Moisture Duo that provides instant firming hydration and delivers a full body glow. It makes me feel so confident and refreshed to walk out the door with unbelievably glowing skin. And there's nothing more I love than getting premium skincare products at an incredible value. So show your skin some love with clean vegan skin and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide and use the code DATABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to OseaMalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Want relationship advice from one of the leading experts in the field of couples therapy? Then Reimagining Love is for you. Hosted by one of our favorite guests on Dateable, Dr. Alexandra Solomon. She is a clinical psychologist, couples therapist, professor, and award-winning author. It is your destination for profound, enlightening discussions about love, family, intimacy, and everything in between. But more than that, she gives us the opportunity to reimagine ourselves our relationships, and our world. So on the show, Dr. Alexandra gives in-depth research-backed takes on topics like dating, jealousy, communication, commitment, personal growth, and features notable guests from the worlds of therapy, academia, and pop culture, such as me and Julie from Dateable, among other people you may have heard of like Esther Perel, Susan Kane, and Emily Nagoski. Her podcast is incredible, definitely worth a listen. We loved being on it and we love having Dr. Alexandra on our show. So you can find her podcast, Reimagining Love, wherever you get your podcasts. So traveling, I feel like (laughs) this is when things fall apart in all well intention. Of course, we don't know this guy. Maybe he's not a flake. Maybe he really got sick and he's traveling all the time. That's totally possible. It's very hard when you don't have that momentum built. Yes. Like when you've gone on a couple dates, then you go away for a week. It's hard to stay in that mindset. What do you think are some ways? Let's say like he does have to cancel. He has to travel. I mean, obviously staying in touch through text is kind of the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. I think even setting up like a FaceTime date or something virtual. Of course, it's not the meeting in person and that whole thing, but it's better than nothing. What do you think? In those early stages of dating, it really is out of sight, out of mind. You're not an important person to them yet in their life. If you don't establish that connection and maintain it, they are going to forget you once they travel. One thing I used to do, knowing that this does happen when people travel, is to say, I know we're about to go our different ways for the holidays. We're not going to see each other for a few weeks. I know that communication can fall off. Can we just make sure that we keep Mm -hmm. connected? Because I am looking forward to seeing you when you get back. That one sets a tone for the fact that you know this happens. So you're being more intentional about it. And two is you are interested in getting to know them. You're not just like, ah, you know, we'll we'll pick it back up once you're back. That just feels very, again, wishy-washy gray area in limbo. Make it more definitive for your own sanity. I think that's really important because I know even as the person traveling, like there's been times that I've wanted to stay in touch, but I'm like, I don't want to look lame that I have nothing to do on my vacation. Yes. And I just want to like FaceTime with them the whole time. Like that can go through someone's mind as well. So just putting it out there for both of you, it's not like one person doesn't have a life and the other one does. It's just we're making time in our lives for each other. And it's out of genuine interest and curiosity. This cannot 
feel fake, not like, no. oh, we should keep in touch because these two girls on the Dateable podcast told me to. It's like <laughs> you genuinely are interested to get to know this person. I remember I was in early stages of dating someone and I was traveling to Sweden. I think we had gone on two dates. And he said before I left, I've never been to Sweden. I hear it's beautiful. Once you get there, can you let me know a good time for you to show me like what's out your hotel window? Yeah, that's really cute. That's so cute. And that's such a genuine way of staying connected. Not like we got to schedule a FaceTime. It's like, I actually just want to know what you're looking at. (laughs) You know, I want to know about your life as you're traveling. Again, there's a lot of details in this email, but part of it was that this person felt like they were getting sick and they were traveling. So that's why they canceled right after. And they did acknowledge Mm. that the timing was bad because they just apologized for flaking. I've definitely had that happen before where someone, they're leaving and you think like, oh, this is going to be the night. Like, of course we have to get together because then if we don't, we won't see each other for three weeks or whatever. And then they cancel and it's a really big letdown. Oh, it is. It's such a letdown. So I think like, first of all, give yourself (sighs) grace if this is you. Like, it's okay to be annoyed by the situation. Situation. And again, it's just not like they're necessarily doing something wrong per se, because like maybe they are getting sick and they don't want to be on a trip getting sick. What's your take of like how to address that with them? Of I'm very disappointed, but I also kind of get it because life does happen. We can't just expect that like people are going to like move mountains all the time, nor would you necessarily want them to if they're like snotty and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and that they are truly feeling sick. And yes, I mean, they're also protecting your health and safety too, right? I think it's great to express your disappointment because it shows you're truly interested. I was very much looking forward to seeing you and I totally understand you're sick. I wish you well. Could we hop on a call or could we do a FaceTime? Do you need anything? Like from a genuine place of care and interest is, again, where I would go back to. Yeah. And I'm not saying this to like play games, but I do think if someone cancels on you, watching what their next step is is so, yes, so telling. If they cancel on you last minute, are they following up immediately with a text? Are they right. rescheduling? Let's say they're not going away for a few weeks, even if they are. Are they rescheduling for when they get back? Like, what is that next step? Because I do think if you're going to cancel a date, the onus has to be on you to show that you're not flaky and reliable. Right. This is still better than someone ghosting you. At least yeah. they gave you the courtesy of canceling and let you know what was going on. So I think let's one award good behavior, mm-hmm. right? So let's say something like, thank you for letting me know as soon as you knew, or thanks for not leaving me hanging. That's a good way to, a positive way to start it. Yeah. Yeah. I was disappointed to hear that, but I also understand and respect your health, and I still look forward to at least getting to know you. Here's what I would suggest. Yeah. I think I'm a firm believer of like second chances, but anything beyond that, I'm not saying like they're totally out, but it's at least call for you to take some action. What we're talking about at the beginning, to state what you need from this person, because what we don't want this listener to get into is the cycle of just waiting for this person. Exactly. That is not a cycle that anyone, and you know, of course he could be sick, he could be traveling, like all that's okay. But at the end of the day, that's not the relationship you want if you're never a priority or seeing the person. I would say two strikes is my opinion. Two times they get sick or they need to travel or whatever. The third time, that's when you have the conversation of, hey, I'm, this is what I'm looking for in a relationship. Like, do you think that's possible? Like, do you think that we can get on the same page? And if not, that's cool. But like, I'm moving on. Right. You can't just like stay there idle because they're just going to keep doing it. People treat you how you let them. Yes. You start building a habit out of it. and. Also, if you're giving someone a second chance, make sure they know it's a second chance. What I mean by this is, yeah, 
Many times when we're dating, we test people without letting them know that we're testing them or that yeah. what our expectations are. Like this is not a giving someone a second chance if the first time they did it, you did not express your disappointment and you did not express what you expect out of the situation. You have to set up people for success that first time around. And if they don't meet you the second time, then you have your answer. You already gave them the roadmap and they didn't follow it. Okay. Well, hopefully this helped. Dating is tough in these early stages. It really can make or break it, these little inactions. Mm. And I think ultimately that's why we do need to like over communicate. I know people are scared to communicate in early stages. You just want to play it cool. You don't want to be too much. That's what we hear. But that's when things fade out. So I personally would always rather be under the guise of I gave it my all. I put out what I was looking for. And again, you don't have to do it in like a rude or condescending way. Like it could just be a conversation that's very vulnerable and like from the heart. And speaking of over communication, we love it when you over communicate with us. Listeners. <laughs> Let us know what's on your mind. You can reach us through so many different ways. You can email us your questions. Hello at datablepodcast.com. You can DM us on Instagram at Datable Podcast is the handle. But best yet is you can leave us a rating and review in Apple Podcasts, five stars. And in the body of your review, you can ask your brunch talk question there and we will push it to the top of the queue. That is the fastest way to get your questions answered. Yeah, we are now recording these as video podcasts. So if you haven't made it over to YouTube, you could do that. Or maybe you're there right now watching it as a video podcast. Yes, we got you no matter where you are. You know, I kind of like brunch talk is video because like you're eating with us. Should we be eating on this? Maybe, video? maybe, okay, maybe we will. put us on the TV. Have your brunch. It's all there. I'm not wearing pants, so <laughs> I'm not going to be getting up in this video. That's the Easter egg for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was much easier when we weren't doing video. I can just get up, but I won't be getting up in this one. But we will see you back here very soon for another episode of Brunch Talk. Bye. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Stay dateable.